Now we are, uh, yeah, we came to the exit dialogue part. So because we have uh, two friends to jump in, uh, Jin Long, Xuan He, please turn on your camera. Yeah, so yeah, let's let's come in. Xuan He, are you there? Yes, yeah. you turned off my uh, video. The system <laughs> turned off my video. <laughs> yeah, uh, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, Hi. we can hear you. I'll see you. Hi, Ooh. come in. Yeah. So uh, it's uh, a very nice day, big day. We see all these all the friends came together. The balance, and, the uh, system turned off my video. Can oh, really? Off? Okay, please help to turn on Xuan He's video. Yeah, could you please? Oh, okay, here it comes. Yeah, here comes all the friends. Oh my God, great, yeah. So this week, yeah, we will talk about the magic wood. I think just now the questions, the last questions were quite linked, you know, the people's together here. Xuan He, you do a lot of things for hydrogen, right? <laughs> Liang Bin was, uh, you know, doing wonderful work for wood. So the last question is ask for hydrogen and the wood. How do you compare? How do you going to work together? Can you guys give some comments? <laughs> uh, well, if I can go first, I wouldn't compare yeah. apple with orange. <laughs> <laughs> it's application or impact driven. Uh, you know, uh, don't ask, uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know, which one is better. First, identify, uh, you know, area of application. And then yeah. we can select the suitable material candidate. And there can be others, right? Uh, Jin Long later will talk about the leaves, artificial leaves. And yeah. then in the previous talk, we learned, you know, uh, uh, magazines, you know, different types of uh, materials, structures, devices. So really, it's an application dream, I would say. That's great. The world is colorful, you know, so many different fields. Like Jin Long, can you tell us something, you know, about, you, you know, artificial leaves? Why you choose artificial leaves? <laughs> <laughs> I think I would like to absorb light for Liang Bing. <laughs> 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 it, yeah, like a bamboo, right? <laughs> if, uh, yeah. If, okay, if, great. So uh, today we focus on these uh, topics. I I think you know, like uh, the question is like this: in China, we have a uh, you know uh, in the traditional Chinese cultures, we have these five you know basic elements, right? Gold, wood, water fire and soil, right, earth. So now you guys choose the wood. So the wood is one of the basic, you know, materials. And uh, Liang Bin, yeah, my question is just now you already said, I want you ask, you know, answer my question is why and how, what's the trigger, you know, for you to go to the wood? You, <laughs> you know, you study physics, right? All your training background is physics, yeah. It, yeah, I think the, um, I mean, I mean, as somebody said, uh, I think Steve Jobs said, uh, it's very hard to predict. I mean, many people said that it's very hard to predict the, the future. But when you look back, everything makes sense. Yeah. And uh, I mean, the the real reason we, we, we would, because, uh, you know, when I was uh, the real reason, okay, why I started my career in University of Maryland. And, you know, uh, I mean, as a system professor, you're just trying to survive, right? So you do all kinds of things. And you search around and you find, actually, you know, I work a lot of nanotubes before. Those are the tiny, tiny tubes in industry as well as in my postdoc research at Stanford with e trade as well as my PhD. And then one day I start to notice material is nanofiber, right? And I mentioned this last work book, yeah. This centrous nanofiber from wood is almost the same as nanotube. But you know, nanotubes, if for oh, very yes. good nanotubes, is going to be four thousand dollar per, per 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 gram. The wood at the most is like two dollar per kilogram. Yeah. So the this price is like a, like thousands of times difference here. Yeah? So it's just the most abundant material, the very small nano feature really attracted me. And then, you know, as you explore more. And you find more excitement there. I think that's the real uh, motivation is, you know, we don't plan for the future. We just, you know, search around and find something that is interesting. And uh, and now if you look back, it's actually make a lot of sense because this material is really abundant. It's really sustainable. You can actually 
I I I visited Shenhe a few months ago. I mean, it can be used for hydrogen as well, right? <laughs> and uh, and it can be component for artificial leaves, uh, like Jinong, right? So <laughs> it's really about the building block, yeah. And uh, I think also we need to work together, right? I mean, I work very closely with Tan Ni. I work very closely with Xiaobo and Ronggui and so on. It's really about using the material as a building block through collaborations and they really look for possibilities. There's nothing we really plan ahead of time yet. We cannot plan the future research. If you can already plan it, then you don't need to do research anymore because you already know that. <laughs> That's just my test. Okay, cool. Yeah, great, great. We know. Yeah, so uh, Jin Long, you chose artificial leaves. You are a long time working in this field and uh, getting very famous. Actually, before you get on the stage, a lot of people was asking me, so what's the magic for Jin Long? You know, he's uh, so young. He you know, grew up so well, so fast. Even, <laughs> you know, fast like, faster than bamboo, right? <laughs> now you are already <laughs> vice president in Tianjin University. Can you tell us what's your magic by this, you know, special speedy grew up? <laughs> um, that's a tough question. <laughs> 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 I, I would say pick it up at the right time to return to China and then pick up new right thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, how did you know that's the right time? That's a perfect time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you already come back for uh, five or six years from uh, Harvard. Yeah, it's my ten years. Ten oh, ten years! years. Yes. My God, ten you years. look yeah. like just graduating. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. <laughs> okay. Uh, cool. So now you have a group, right? A larger group in Tianjin University was focused on this topic, right? Exactly. This is one of my major topics. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, you have many topics. Uh, yeah, I will also work on industrial catalysis as well. Wow, cool. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, I heard that you also, you know, have another kind of responsibilities in your university. Yeah, you will, you will to attract more high school students to come to Tianjin U, right? Right, right, right. <laughs> exactly. Actually, at Tianjin University, I'm responsible for teaching. It's like a provost, right? I'm also responsible for recruiting new students, freshmen. So I would like to invite students parents to recommend your kids, friends, to look at Tianyi University. We are known as a Peiyang University, the first modern university. I'm glad Xuanhe is also here. He's also <laughs> yeah. well, well, excellent alumni in, 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 in microelectronics, right, Xuanhe? Yes, yes. yes. Look, I do few words here because now it's very important time, you know, for the high school students and parents, you know, to choose a school. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll try, I'll try to help. So uh, when I was a high school student, the reason I chose Tianjin University, uh, uh, so uh, mentors at that time told me, uh, if you go to Tianjin University, you'll find a good job. The majors there are, you know, very well organized, students are well educated you'll find a good job. Uh, so it is absolutely true. So after I graduate, uh, you know, and all of my classmates uh, all find uh, very good jobs uh, from uh, Tianjin University. So that's what I can say. Uh, you know, beyond that, uh, Jin Long and, uh, you know, uh, uh, other colleagues from Tianjin University may add more, but uh, uh, I think it's a great experience. Uh, it will be a wonderful choice for high school student who consider, uh, you know, university or college uh, to enter. Okay, great. Actually, I still remember last time, you know, Xuan He, you on the stage delivered a talk, you remember, uh, your supervisor, you know, at your inner time, your supervisor was came here, yeah, very warm words. And I think, you know, the professors in Chinese University was to take care for the students very well. And they love the students very well. So that's very nice. So that's just the one kind of, uh, you know, uh, switch. So yeah, uh, here we are so lucky to have uh, three of you, you know, and I think three of you uh, are very big demos for the young generation. So is that possible? Everyone uh, have a one or two or 
you know, words for the young generations in the, you know, in the audience, how to, you know, continue for the work, how to, uh, you know, uh, for the future, any encouragement for them? Sure, I will, I'll go first. <laughs> yeah, sure. Change I'll go first, yeah. So uh, I will quote, uh, so I'll use a quote from my mentors. Uh, Life is too short. Do something that you love, do something that matters. Okay, great. Yeah, like that. Yeah, don't waste their time in some, you know, no sense things. Yeah, no sense things. Okay, so Liang Bing? Um, okay. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, on come to research, uh, my suggestion or my uh, what I learned from many outstanding scholars is that you know, don't plan too much. You just just do it, <laughs> and then be curious and be open, and especially through collaborations, because a lot of things you can really not plan. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. So just a hard working and uh, you know, folks to do something like. Yeah. So Jin Long. Yeah. So a lot of people want to follow you. <laughs> okay. I would recall my postdoc advisor. George Whiteside mentioned to us, pick up important thing to do, although it would be very likely to be failed. Wow, cool. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. And thank you three of you. I think that's magic time. We not only make the magic wool size, we also make a magic life, right? Yeah, hardworking, you know, do something interesting and uh, go ahead. So yeah, uh, thank you so much. And we will go to the second part of our talks. And Jin Long, are you ready? So yeah. I had him one, you know, here. So if anyone now in China, you know, out of mainland China, you can follow us on Twitter. You can see the video, uh, videos on YouTube and then you do the online survey and follow us. So uh, please. So yeah, now Xuan He, you are our guest host for Jin sure. Long. So now is your time. Okay. Sure. Yeah, please. Hello, welcome. Uh, hello, everyone. <laughs> welcome to ICANX uh, Talk. Uh, my name is Xuan He Zhao. I'm a, a professor of mechanical engineer uh, at MIT. Uh, today is uh, a great pleasure uh, to introduce uh, Professor uh, Jin Long Gong uh, from Tianjin University. Uh, Jin Long is the uh, Changken Chair Professor of the School of Chemical Engineer and Technology in Tianjin University. And he is also the director of uh, International Joint Research Center for Energy Chemical Engineering of Tianjin. So he is a very well-known expert in the field of energy chemical engineering and he is a genius uh, catalyst. Uh, Professor Gong's major field of research including uh, artificial photosynthesis, uh, arcane activation, as well as a conversion of a carbon dioxide, uh, carbon uh, oxides. Uh, today, we just heard a talk about the magic wood. Uh, we will transit all the way from a magic wood to artificial leaves. So Professor Gong will uh, talk about, uh, uh, you know, uh, great things about conversion of uh, carbon dioxide uh, with uh, the artificial leaf technology. Uh, from his group and the research community. Oh, one more thing to add. Uh, it's actually a great pleasure to know. Uh, Jin Long and uh, me, we are alumni at both at Tianjin University and Harvard University. So it's my great pleasure uh, to present Professor Gong. Okay. Uh, thank you, Xuan He, for your kind introduction. It's nice to see you again. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So first of all, I would like to thank Alice to give me this opportunity to give a talk at this platform. As you all can imagine, it's not easy to give a presentation after Liang Bing. That's always the truth. So, but I will try to do my best. So tonight I would like to, uh, probably some guys on the, on the other side of Earth in the morning, I would like to give a talk on our recent develop development on artificial photosynthesis. Okay, I would like to particularly talk about the configuration design 
to device assemble based on the material science, chemistry, chemical engineering, and energy, energy and engineering. Okay, so as you all know, the energy is, of, is always a focus of research. And particularly uh, for the past decades, the demand for the consumption of energy has been, has been increased rapidly. Of course, increased China. However, if you look at the infrastructure of China, right, the energy is still dominated by the fossil fuel, such as coal and crude oil. So the, the, the excess, excessive use of fossil fuels has brought about the problems of the CO2 emission, as well as, as, well as other uh, uh, pollutant problems. So in order to meet the Copenhagen uh, Agreement, as well as China, China's uh, uh, ambitions to reduce CO2 emission, is always a, 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 for scientists to find alternative and new energy resources. So in order to solve the environmental problems, as mentioned earlier on, the development of renewable energy resources and the search for the new type of energy utilization has attracted worldwide attention. So as Liam Bing mentioned to you guys, has a work on the lips, right? Also for the world tax for other researchers. So renewable energy is representative by the solar energy is inexhaustible. So on this basis, we would convert the solar energy into electricity and then use the electrocatalytical or what we call photoelectrocatalytical methods to convert through carbon dioxide and water into fuels such as hydrogen, methanol, ethanol, as well as alkenes. So therefore, we can achieve we can achieve zero emission energy supply in principle. As you know, since this process is similar to the photosynthesis in nature, so we call it as artificial photosynthesis, and the resulting fuels we call it solar fuels. So we have the typically we have a following two types of devices for the synthesizing solar fuels. One is what I call photoelectrocatalytical cells, and another one is a photovoltaic and electrocatalysis hybrid. So we, 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 we call PV and EC. Among them, as you know, PC emphasize the synergy of light and electricity, while the PVEC focuses more on the use of electrical energy. So the different reaction systems has different configurations as well as different reaction process. So in principle, the reaction process of a PEC is more complicated because everything is assembled in one device. It also worth mentioning that if the PEC does not use external bias as a auxiliary, then it will realize the fully solid driven chemical reactions like a PVEC does to form artificial leaves. So the PEC process is more complicated than PVEC as I, as I mentioned earlier on. Ge generally, the PEC process first needs to generate charge carriers. That is, the semiconductor material is excited by sunlight. The electrons in the valence band are excited to the conducting band. And on the other side, the holes are generated in the valence band, thereby generating electron hole pairs. So the electrons will participate in reduction reactions to produce hydrogen, 
right? And uh, the host will participate in the oxidation reactions. So it means that we oxidize the water into oxygen. I also need to mention oh, the later reaction is the kinetic is slower, typically to order of magnitude compared to the HER reaction. In addition to the generation of charge carriers in the PV PC process, the energy of a generated carrier is also important. This figure is a very uh, state of art. Uh, you have seen in many review articles, right, which shows that the position of valence band of a common semiconductor materials. And the, the thermodynamic potential of CO2 reduction and water splitting. In terms of thermodynamics, thermodynamics specifically, in all analytical system or reaction, a certain barrier must be overcome. Such a barrier is typically much higher than the conducting band position of a common semiconductors. Therefore, we need to apply an external electrical field to overcome it. Since the electrons are generated by semiconductor itself has a certain amount of energy, thereby reducing the consumption of electrical energy. So we also need to know that the energy band of thermoconductor material will also bend due to the contact with electrolyte. Therefore, generating a built-in electrical field. Specifically, in P-type semiconductors, the balance and the conducting band at the interface bend downwards, which helps electrons move towards the surface of the like semiconductor and the infer inferences of the built-in electrical field and the whole the counter electrode. So the P-type semiconductor are often used as a cathode for reducting water and the carbon dioxide. In contrast, N-type semiconductor are typically used as anodes to catalyze oxidation reaction to produce oxygen. Although the PEC process is much more complicated, as I mentioned earlier, compared to the PVEC system, one of the major reasons is that PEC can directly conduct the photogenerated charge to the surface for the reaction, while PVEC system needs to conduct the charge to the catalyst surface through an external circuit. So there is a ohmic loose in the PVEC system. Therefore, in principle, PEC has a higher energy conversion efficiency. However, the PVEC system has an advantage of a better stability and the easier enlargement of the electrode area. So as many of us see, they have two sides. Of course, this is also true for the PEC and the PVEC system. So in order to construct artificial leaves, and realize artificial photosynthesis, we adopt the following research route. First of all, we use a narrow gap, band gap semiconductor as, a other, as our light absorbing substrate to expand the light absorbing range. Then we use a method of constructing a heterojunction 
and passivating the interface to promote the se uh, separation of photogenerated carrier. So the carrier can participate as much as possible to the surface reaction. On the other hand, in order to improve the overall stability, we cover the light absorbing substrate with a protective layer. So this is similar to the sunglass, right? The, the, the structure is a very complicated layer by layer, typically need a five to six layers. It's also true for you to construct the artificial leaf. Finally, under the guidance of a high throughput theoretical calculation, we introduce controllable green boundaries, interfaces, alloys, to improve the surface reaction rate, kinetics, selectivities. <coughs> and thus, after a series, series of reasonable designs, we can finally achieve the efficient synthesis of a solar fuse without external biases. So this is basically the principle behind our design of artificial lifts. So I will particularly talk about the several specific aspects. First of all, is a photoelectro water splitting, followed by the CO2 reduction. And then I will give you several examples for putting together a, 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 a assembly of artificial leaves. So the current research interest in the PEC water splitting is using narrow band gap semiconductor, as I mentioned earlier on, as a light absorbing substrate, because narrow band gap semiconductor has a wide range of light response and a high light conversion efficiency. There are the two type of work I need to mention here. One is a, a from Doman's group of, uh, of the University of Tokyo, his group adjusted the ratio of India to gallium in CRGS, which is a typically a solar cell, a material for the solar cells. So there's this method. They can change the energy band matching between CRGS and canium sulfide and improve the transfer efficiency of uh, photogenerated electrons. As you can see here, at the zero volt, volts versus uh, RHE, uh, we can uh, we can obtain a current density of about 28 milliamps per square centimeter. So for the single crystal silicon photoelectrodes, the another work from the Professor Wilson at the Delft, Delft in in Netherlands through the 18 hours against the treatment of the surface nickel metal alloy, okay, particularly converted into the uh, nickelous oxide or uh, nickelous hydroxide or the, or, the, or the hybrid of the two mix, which improves the degree of energy band bending and improves the water oxid oxidation performance of this uh, silica anode. So silica is very, very important for the classical semiconductor industry, for the PV system, of course, for the PEC system. So however, there are still some problems for this uh, commercialized uh, material, CRGS. So we need to redesign and optimize the traditional photo cathode. So there are two challenges. One is uh, how to improve the photovoltage, and another one is how to increase the surface kinetics, which makes the surface reaction occurs more fastly. So we use a chemical bath method to deposit untype cadmium, cadmium sulfide on P-type CRGS substrate to form a PN junction, which improves the photovoltage of this P-type CRGS. So aiming at the solving the problem of the poor surface kinetics is this a classical photoelectrodes. So we also propose a two-step deposition method, right? Uh, one, 
use to, to, to make a nucleation of a platinum nanoparticles, and then to grow these nanoparticles in a controlled manner. So in, from this method, we can regulate the particle size and the spatial distribution of this uh, platinum-based cool catalyst. Compared with a platinum-based cool catalyst, prepared by the traditional sputtering method. So this material, okay, exhibits better catalytical activity, as you can see from these IV measurements. However, the feeling factor is still poor, which is a cause that we believe by the charge recombination at the surface. Therefore, we use an atomic layer deposition technique to deposit alumina oxide as a passivation layer to eliminate the interfacial defects. It's also a very common method for the, for the semiconductor industry. It can be seen from the transient and steady state photoluminescence spectrum that the sample deposited with alumina oxide has a lower interfacial, interfacial recombination rate. So the, the final photoelectrode structure, as, as shown here, as I mentioned earlier, is more like a, a sunglasses type of a, a, a optical a, a material, right? The electrodes uh, exhibit uh, applied biased uh, photo to current efficiency of about 6.6% in a neutral uh, in a neutron electrolyte. And also we have studied this material in a strong acid uh, electrolyte. So we can achieve a even higher ABPE efficiency, uh, which is about 9.3%. It was also the one of the highest efficiency among this commercialized based photo cathode reported during, during that period of time. In addition to the heterojunctions, short, short key junctions constructed of metal insulator semiconductors, they call the MIS, are also widely used in the PEC water splitting. And also we borrow this idea from the PV system and semiconductor industry. But their performance still has a large gap compared to the classical silicon-based pin junctions. So this is mainly due to the two problems. One is the downlink bounds on the surface of a single crystal silicon. The defect, another one is the defect states at the interface between the metal and the semiconductor. So first of all, we introduce the biofacial passivation strategy to simultaneously eliminate dominant bond on the silicon surface and the metal semiconductor interfacial defects. Okay, among them, the bottom amorphous silicon field can effectively eliminate the dominant bond on the surface of this uh, single crystal silicon. Upon the modification, the dark current of this electrode has been significantly reduced compared to that before the modification. And the minority carrier lifetime has been increased from about 18 microseconds uh, to about 2,000 microseconds, which is about two other magnitude higher. This also indicates that intrinsic amorphous silicon state film has effectively illuminated the surface defect. Secondly, for the eliminating the defect state states induced by the metal on the surface of this silicon single crystal, the oxide layers were introduced. We also use the EPOI, the ALD technique to deposit titanium dioxide, take, account, take into the account of the role of uh, eliminating defects and the transporting a charge carrier. So you can also see from this PL spectrum that upon the modification, the surface defect in 
induced the, the recombination is a significantly reduced, proving that the metal-induced defect state has been effectively removed. So we, we apply this um, unique means junction with our biofacial passivation layers to the PEC water oxidation reaction. Okay, but you can, you can see from the LSV curve that the misjunction is about facial passivation layers. Okay, as shown here, has improved the photovoltaics and the saturation current density relative to the misjunction without any modification. Okay, we can also achieve the efficiency about 3.9%. So this is, a, this is also one of the uh, highest value uh, in the mid junction system. Simultaneously, we can also achieve a very good stability uh, for this type of material. On the other hand, due to the beneficial passivation, the minority carrier diffusion length of the mid junction can reach to about 1600 micro or microns, which is a much larger compared to the thickness of the single crystal silica wafer, which is a typically about 115 microns. Therefore, we can shift the junction regime to the back of the electrodes. So take advantage of this characteristic. So we can redesign the inverse the mid structure, okay, as shown here in this cartoon, to solve the contradiction between the saturation current and the barrier height in the classical mid structure, and applied this electrode to the hydrogen evolution reaction. So the performance of this uh, inverse the mid structure, okay has a very unique characteristic. So it has a good onsite potential and a high ABPE efficiency and a stability more than uh, several hundred hours. So as you can see from this movie, okay, and also the, 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 the efficiency calculation, which is about 12.7%, okay, uh, is also one of the highest value among the silicon-based misjunction and also uh, uh, exceeding the most silicon-based pin homojunction a homo junction or photocastle. So this video also shows the hydrogen bubbles produced under the simulated sunlight irradiation. So uh, next, uh, I will also briefly talk about uh, how we can specifically design uh, the PEC cell for the CO2 reduction. And then later on, I can uh, show you uh, several examples or assemble everything together into a real artificial leaf. So this is also a very hot topic of my research area, right? And also generated some very important results so there are two, two work I need to mention here. For example, uh, about a year ago, uh, a Professor uh, Agar at uh, UC Berkeley used also this uh, sin a single crystal silica as a substrate of a porous copper as a surface coal catalyst. So they can achieve of about 80% of, 80 of a, a combustion product selectivity. And also one of my best friends, Professor Xiong Yujie at the University of Science Technology of China. He used a morph to modify a corporous oxide cathode castle to also achieve a better conversion efficiency of CO2 to sea gas. So among this uh, promising progress, which has been made in this, in this specific area, so we also need to recognize that applied bias is still relatively large and the selectivity of a high value added products is still low. 
for example, the 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 long uh, the the long uh, the higher carbon on, on alcohols or alkenes. Okay, so therefore our focus is to increase the driving force and reduce the applied bias by rationally designing the photoelectrode structure. Okay, and simultaneously. We also look at the surface reaction pathway to regulate the product distribution. So I will also tell you several uh, structure as an example here. So in order to enhance the driven force, so we start with the amorphous silicon solid cells as a substrate. So this is a very uh, fabulous substrate, so which can can be separated from the holes of the electrons from this substrate, can be separated from the holes, and the building electrical field of the PIN hydrojunction. So the form, the form, the formation of the PIN hydrojunction is very important. Okay, the electrons from this hydrojunction can be transported into the surf catalyst surface and the participant in a CO2 reduction reaction. So simultaneously, the, the back illumination mode reduces the parasitic absorption of the co-catalyst, promoting the absorption of the light of the substrate, also increase the photogenerated voltage. So we also use a good nanoparticle, so very famous plasmonic metals, and we deposit these nanoparticles on the electrode surface by the EB evaporation as a catalyst. So we also controllably change the green boundary density by adjusting the particle size of distribution, particle size distribution of gold. So if you look at the linear relationship between the bonding structure of the intermediates and the Gold green binary density, we realize the controllable modulation of the CO hydrogen ratio, which is very important for the generation of syngas. Right? Syngas is called the, 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 base, the basics, the basics of a chemical industry. Okay, uh, uh, this is a CO hydrogen ratio in our product distribution. And also, uh, we can tune the most uh, commonly used ratio uh, of one to uh, two, or one to one to one to two, based on this uh, gold, uh, green boundary density. So under the, the AM 1.5G uh, light uh, illumina illumination, the, the, the efficiency of this amorphous uh, photo silicon photocathode can reach to about the 0.428 without any further modification. So the reduction of CO2 always faces the competition from the water splitting and to, uh, to produce hydrogen. So we need to use this hydrogen to convert it into other hydrogen containing molecules. So in order to further improve the selectivity of the carbosterous product, products, it's necessary to find a material to inhibit the hydrogen production or surprise the hydrogen reaction. So copper oxide is, of course, one of such best candidates. So however, uh, the copper oxide is also notable for this uh, very low stability. OK, it can be easily deactivated when it is directly used in the PEC process because of a light illumination. Okay, therefore, we first design experiments to understand the mechanism behind the deactivation of this copper oxide. So we conduct the comparative experiments. Okay, for the time issue, I will not talk about the detail here, but we found that the copper oxide and the better stability and the front illumination mode. This is because of the whole transport distance 
is a shorter and there's a front illumination mode. So the main reason for its deactivation is oxidative corrosion of the holes. Aiming at the reducing the oxidative corrosion. So we propose to place the corpus oxide in the dark cathode, where instead of the, uh, the light cathode, to avoid the generation of the photogenerated holes. Meanwhile, this photogenerated electrons, okay, as a photoanodes, can be transported into the corpus oxide through an external circuit to drive a CO2 to reduction reactions. This, but this is ideally, okay, for the elastic, we have to place both electrodes under the light. So, but this is a model type of a study, okay? So we can use this method to stabilize the catalyst surface, okay? Surprise the side reaction and promoting the conversion of CO2 to other methanol and zinc gas product. We also look at the reason, okay, for inhibiting the HDR reaction on this uh, corpus oxide surface. So we rely on the DFT calculation first, followed by exact reaction measurements. So we found that the surface hydroxyl species has a great influence on the absorption carboxyl groups, which plays a very important role in competition of CO2 reduction and HDR reaction. So when the surface coverage of hydroxyl groups is moderate, okay, which here is a, about half monolayer. So this corpus oxygen catalyst can both promote CO2 reduction and inhibit the hydrogen evolution reaction. So this is the fundamental reason. So why the dark react cathode can show the good performers is that the larger driven force and the moderate for the current of the titanium dioxide for the castle adjust the coverage of a hydroxyl groups on the surface of this dark cathode. This gives us a guideline on how much of a surface bounded species okay, is optimized to fully convert the CO2 into thin gas or mass. In order to further increase the proportion of the liquid product in the final abortious product, we also need to explore the, 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 the insight of the reaction mechanism. So we have designed a couple of model experiments, and we found that when the hydrogen species needed for the CO2 reduction, come from absorb, absorbed hydrogen, the product will be the mass. Node. On the other hand, when the source of hydrogen species is a proton, so the product obtained is methane. So in order to increase the proportion of the mass node in the final product, so the type of absorbed hydrogen is a key issue. However, the binding energy of the absorbed hydrogen on the, corpus, on the corpus oxide surface is so quite weak. As, I mentioned, as Liang B mentioned earlier on, hydrogen bonding is always weak, right? which limits the production of the mass node. So we through the DFD calculation, we find that the combine the copper and the corpus oxide, right? and the, the two and the one valent state of copper, to construct the metal oxide interface is very important, which can significantly enhance the binding energy of the absorbed hydrogen on the surface. And also at this interface, the binding energy of the absorbed, absorbed hydrogen and, the, and CO are balanced. So the, which means there's a trade-off between the absorbed hydrogen and the CO. This structure could be beneficial for the production of mass node. 
So under the guidance of the theoretical calculation, so we design a such structure by deposit copper nanoparticles with a controllable particle size on the surfaces of the copper oxide, okay, with a adjustable uh, permanent length. So use the catalyst with the interfacial size as I show you here, right? Uh, for the CO2 reduction. The Faraday efficiency of a mass null can be reached to about 54%, which also shows that construction of the interfacial sites can realize the regulation of the formation of a mass null pathway. Compared to the single carbon product, multi-carbon products are more valuable as I mentioned earlier on. A coupling between the absorbed CO is a key to absorb the, mult, the multi carbon product. So, we first look at the absorption and the conversion of CO on the copper based catalyst. Okay, it's also through the DFT calculation. Okay, according uh, to our result, the green boundary sites on copper can enhance the absorption energy of CO, thereby effectively reduce the reaction barrier for CC coupling process. Therefore, we can get an idea, which is that if the green boundary size can be effectively constructed on the copper surface, it will help to improve the selectivity of a multi-carbon product. So with the help of a PVP, which is also very classical surfactant, okay, on the regulation of the electro deposition kinetics, we can also construct a green boundary sites on the surface of metallic copper nanoparticles by using a very simple and a conventional method. So the performance test of this CO2 reduction indicates that compared with a copper catalyst without any green boundary. So this catalyst rich in green boundaries exhibit a remarkable multi-carbon product for the efficiency, which is about 80%. This is what we want, right? We want to have one ethylene, propylene, right? And also as well as the ethanol. Based on this result, we build a PV EC system and a considerable energy conversion efficiency of this solar energy to this uh, uh, multi carbon products can be obtained. The efficiency is about 3.9%. So, as you can see, although we have made some little progress on the water splitting and the CO2 reduction. This reaction still sometimes use the external electrical field to, ass to assist. So next I will introduce uh, some of our uh, recent results, which I think is very exciting, on the unbiased reaction, which mainly induce, includes the tandem water splitting and the solar driven CO2 reduction reactions. Okay, here are two challenges. One is how to increase the photovoltaics. Another one is for the mass trans transport phenomenon. Okay, particularly when you scale up your reactors. This has never been done in this specific area. Okay, first let us take a brief look at the natural photosynthesis. Okay, and I mentioned earlier on, the natural photosynthesis in involves the two processes, one of which is oxidation of water to oxygen and the production of a reducing hydrogen species, okay, which must be carried out under the light condition. It also occur under light and it is also called a light reaction. Another process does not require light and the active hydrogen production by the light reaction can be used to fix CO2 as organic, as organic and the action as an enzyme. 
So our was splitting reaction is equivalent to the natural photosynthesis light reduction. And the CO2 reduction is equivalent to the natural synthesis dark reaction. So some impressive progress I have to mention here. Year ago, uh, also one of my friend, Professor Zotiemi, he is now transferred from University of McGill to University of Michigan. Okay, he designed a p-type indium calcium nitride photocathode, an n-type monocrystalline silicon to build a self-driven water splitting system without any buyers. And also in that year, Professor Grizzle, right, the father of a sensitized, photosensitized photovoltaic cells, okay? Uh, connect, he, his group actually assemble a proboscite solar cell and the CO2 reduction devices in series, fully using the light energy to drive the CO2 reaction reaction CO2 reduction reactions on the surface of the copper nanoware catalyst. Okay, the efficiency about 4%. It's very amazing. Okay, we can see from our studies as well as from the literature that both silicon and the CRGS electrodes can generate the photovoltage over 0.6 volts, which can be connected in series with the best performer, performing business of the native photo anodes, okay, to constructing water splitting tandem cell. It can also be seen from here, the energy band structure that the business mandate has a large band gap, the silica or CRGS. So by connecting the photo anodes and the photo cathode in series, the short wavelength sunlight is absorbed by the BVO4 and the long wavelength light transmitting through the BV, BIVO4, which is finally absorbed by the silica or CRGM. So we further use this uh, commercialized uh, uh, silica heterojunction solar cell to assist the silica photocathode to provide additional photovoltaics a photovoltage and realize unbiased water splitting. As you can see, we can achieve a, a efficiency about 4.4% here. So in about three type of investigations, we have constructed a water splitting tandem cell with an electrolyte between the photocathode and the anode. So which brings extra light loose and Ohmic clues. In order to solve this problem, okay, we can get an idea from the light reaction process of a natural photosynthesis. So in the light reaction process, water is split into oxygen gas and hydrogen ions in the PS2 subsystem. So the hydrogen ions further participate the reduction of NADP in the PS1 subsystem to obtain NADPH. Okay, the entire light reaction is seamlessly connected by the two subsystems, which result any extra loses. Therefore, we, 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 we decide to integrate, okay, the, the photo anode and the photo cathode to reduce the additional loose. So this pictures, the pictures on the left, on the left side is artificial, type of artificial devices, leaf devices, which we built. The photo cathode and the photo anode are integrated into one devices to achieve hydrogen production on one side and the oxygen production on the other side. Okay, the efficiency can be reached to about 3.7%. In addition to the above mentioned tender cell with a stack illumination mode, we also try a parallel illumination mode. Okay, we use amorphous silica as a photo anode and a commercial platinum wafer as a dark castle. And build a tandem cell with the help of a, 
is commercialized silicon solar cells. And the efficiency is about 3.6%. Furthermore, we have constructed the silicon-based tandem cell without this assistance of any other type of solar cells. Okay, as you can see from these LSV curves on the right, okay, the two junction silicon photocathode and the two junction silicon photocathode are connected in a parallel illumination mode to get a photocurrent density about 8.3 milliamps per square centimeter, which is a, a can be converted into about 80% of uh, uh, overall efficiency from solar to uh, uh, solar to, uh, to energy, chemical energy. So we test uh, these uh, devices uh, as a full cell and as an outdoor uh, environment. About two years ago, as you can see, uh, so the bubbling from the both electrode. Nowadays, we can get an even higher result and we can uh, we have get some scale up the uh, electrodes, which is about 10 by 10 uh, uh, centimeters, uh, square centimeters. So compared to the water splitting, the CO2 reduction reactions is much more complicated. Okay, in order to achieve the practice, uh, practical applications of these artificial leaves. Okay, so breakthroughs in the uh, multiple fields are needed. For example, in the catalyst design, the characteristics of uh, active size must not be fully started, such as uh, electronic structures. Okay, also, and also in the design of a reaction system, the flow patterns design of a reactor must be considered to break the mesh transport phenomenon, okay, or limitation to accelerate the energy and the mass transfer process. It's very important to bridge the classical chemical engineering with energy engineering. Okay, I think it is also very exciting area, a new type of area uh, for people to start work with. So from the structure of the natural leaves, okay, we can also get ideas for breaking the mass transfer limitation. Okay, the leaves realize the efficiency, effective uh, diffusion of CO2 in the gas phase through the stomata and the spinal tissues, thereby achieving the efficient conversion of CO2 as a catalytical site of this uh, chloroplast. Okay, about two weeks ago, there was a paper published in Science to design artificial uh, uh, to design artificial chromoplast. So, in the traditional PEC CO2 reduction reaction, the H cell is often used as a reaction devices. So, such a, a, a system is always limited by the mass transfer transfer process and the low soluble. Uh, solubility of CO2 in water, which resulting, uh, which resulting in high energy consumption and the low energy conversion efficiency. So we have to, I think, for the future study, adopt the gas diffusion electrodes to break the limitation of CO2 mass transfer process. So through the use of a, a, a gaseous uh, CO2 reduction, okay, we have achieved a serious highly efficient efficient unbiased solar driven CO2 reduction system. As I'm showing here, by using a higher energy bombardment deposition etching strategy, we can obtain a copper based thin film with a selective exposure of 100 facets. So while connected with a commercialized variable silicon based solar cell, much higher current and ethylene selectivity can be achieved as a, and the efficiency uh, for, the, uh, for the ethylene is about 80%. Also for the synthesis of a solar cell, the further application cost is also a factor to be considered. About four years ago, uh, Professor Nathan Lewis at Caltech uh, calculated the cost of water splitting, as you can see in this DOE report. 
And they found that when the STH efficiency of both either PEC or PV EC system about 10%, it takes about 11.4 or $12.1 dollars to get a one kilogram of hydrogen respectively. It is still much, much higher compared to the uh, to the to the uh, uh, fossil fuel uh, based uh, hydrogen price, uh, uh, price. For example, uh, based on the uh, reforming process. Okay, so we believe that the growing development development of a photovoltaic industry, the cost of uh, this hydrogen production will become closer to the. Uh, uh, fusel energy hydrogen production. And also there are another important work uh, to look at the uh, uh, technical uh, economical uh, of the CO2 reduction. Okay, a surgeon from University of Toronto uh, look at the, uh, this economics. Okay, they found that the energy conversion efficiency exists at 60%. Okay, when the when it exists sixty percent, the single product Faraday efficiency exists ninety percent. So the price of electricity generated by this uh, new energy infrastructure uh, is only about two cents U.S. two uh, two cents of U.S. dollar. Okay, per kilowatt hour, and also the cost of CO two reduction technology is uh, expected to be lower than the market price are relevant relatively chemical products. This is a still, uh, the, the evaluation of the price is a still uh, before the new coronavirus. Okay, nowadays the crude oil is much, much cheaper. So this is need to be recalculated. So in the end, I would like to summarize my talk. So I hope I convince you that based on artificial photosynthesis, okay, uh, we can uh, reduce the carrier recombination, okay, during the transportation process through the effective interfacial passivation. We can also uh, be, uh, use, uh, employ the energy band engineering to design the photoelectrode structure according to the energy band position of the material, okay. We can cover the photoelectrode with the suitable protective layers to ensure the stable operation of the system in either as, as acidic solution or uh, uh, basic base solutions. So we can combine theoretical calculation with the catalyst design to control the surface reaction pathway. It has also been proved that this four key I uh, mentioned here. Uh, scientific issues are not independent to each other, but uh, interacting and will influence each other. So the future, much more systematic work needed to put together a real effective full cell. So next I would like to, this is one of, one of my last slides, okay? Uh, I would like to uh, also make an outlook on the, develop, on the future develop, uh, direction of this artificial photosynthesis, the shielding effect of the catalyst layer and the protective layer on the sunlight absorption will reduce the solar energy efficiency. Therefore, how to, how to e eliminate the shielding e effect of the catalyst layer on the sunlight absorption is much become much more research focused in the future. Okay, research can be carried out from two aspects. First of all, developing a fully transparent catalyst layer, which has both good light transmittance and a good catalytical property. Second, achieving the design of photoelectrodes for the light absorption on one side and the reaction on the other side. Okay, in order to further improve the absorption efficiency, of this uh, photoelectrode for sunlight. It's particularly important to design the photoelectrodes, okay, with a double-sided light absorption characteristics. This is also the most important area uh, has been going on in my group, and I hope I will get another opportunity 
to give you some better idea on what's going on here. Another developed direction for artificial synthesis is the design and development of flexible PC for the electrodes. Okay, and uh, particularly for these uh, portable devices or uh, 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 conditional, uh, 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 condition uh, specified uh, situation. Okay, so with that, I hope that with our efforts, we can finally to achieve 10% of uh, solar to hydrogen or solar to fuel efficiency, which is a benchmark value to scale up the artificial leaves into commercialized product. With that, I would like to thank my students, my collaborators, as well as the funding agency. With that, I would like to thank you all for your attention and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, great. Uh, Jim Long, could you please, uh, you know, close your screen? Chef, here comes the question. All right. Sure. Can you hear? Yes. Alice, <laughs> we'll play the questions. On the, uh, okay, sure. Uh, wonderful talk, Jim Long. Uh, really enjoyed. Uh, question uh, one. This is uh, a student or uh, professor from uh, Xi'an Jiao Tong University. Uh, mm -hmm. Professor Gong, thanks uh, a lot for your uh, wonderful talk. Is there any way to achieve non-biased CO2 reduction without a PV assisted? What's the difference uh, between CO2O used as the dark cathode in PEC and directly used as a cathode? in electrocatalysis. Okay, that's a, that's a very good question. The first one, I think I show you two examples, okay, to achieve non-bias CO2 reduction without any external bias. Okay, uh, a second question is that we can use a CO2, a corpus oxide as a light cathode but we need a protect, protective layer on the top of this, this photo castle. So the, the, the work I mentioned earlier on, uh, about four years ago, we use a model system to look at how this photo, ca photo castle can be deactivated. But later on, we can deposit a very fine uh, protective layer, transparent protective layer to use this uh, corporal oxide as a white castle. Oh, I hope I answer your question. Wonderful. Uh, next question, Professor Go. For the artificial leaves, do you think that surface pattern or structure can enhance the performance or the morphology of the surface can enhance, uh, enhance the performance? That's a, that's a very nice question. And so also that's some very important work for the future research. As, as, in the, at the end of my talk, I mentioned the flexible PEC photoelectrodes, right? We can use the soft lithography or such a type of techniques to make any patterns or many structure of the, the leaves. I think that's a very, uh, that will be a very interesting work. Wonderful. Next question, there is a hybrid approach to design artificial leaves by combining organic and inorganic enzymes. The paper you just mentioned, for example, you know, uh, right. the advantage and the disadvantage comparing this uh, hybrid approach or the approach using only inorganic components. How come on, on that? Uh, I think that's a very, Tough question, okay? But I believe in the end of the day, uh, for this type of research, there need to be hybrid system. Okay, if you look at the, the nature, right? Most of the uh, nature-wise, the beautiful system, uh, hybrid system. And also I think there, there's also a new research, where, research area. People try to put together either bacteria or enzyme Right, 
with a with an inorganic material. For example, Professor Pei Dong Yang at a, at UC Berkeley, right? They combine the quantum dot with a bacteria for doing that. But of course, everything has a pros and a cons. Very good. I think this is the same question. Yes, exactly. Can we go to the next one? Shan from CSUFT, impressive talk. Dentify process make wood heavy. Uh, this, uh, is for, the, this is for uh, Liang Bing. Liang Bing. Right. <laughs> Now me, as you here. Okay, yeah, I'm here. I have another, another one come here. So I don't have a chance to post on that. I'll ask you on site. Okay. Thanks, Jim Long. Does the PEC need X-ray or solar light? And it need expensive metal to catalyze the PEC, paint mass produce? Uh, I think ideally, we do not want to have a, a novel metal, right? That's also one an, another type of area we have been looking at. But the people typically use a platinum based upon a catalyst for the HER reaction. Okay, cool. Yeah. So that's all for the questions. Uh, okay, this was the uh, next one, the same, right? Oh, yeah. What's the challenge in mass scale of production of artificial leaves? What's the roadmap for commercialization? Do you know you just mentioned this uh, towards the end of your talk? Yes, but this is a very good question. I think uh, for the whole system, also the reactor scale up is also, I think, challenge, but uh, I think uh, doable compared to the classical chemical reactors. We need to consider the configuration of light, right? The position of the electrolytes and so on. Okay, cool. I think that's the end of the talk. It's my great honor to deliver this to you. Jim Long, your wonderful talk. Thank yeah. you, Alice. <laughs> so I have, that's a tradition. Because we invited the speakers to deliver for their latest work. And we connect the world and universe by this high tech. So, Jim, I'm proud of you. That's for you, the electrical version. Thank you, Alice. And Xuan Ho. I like this very much. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, for the questions, they come out later. So, yeah, sometimes they make some mistakes. But it's right, very good. Very good. Yeah. yeah. No problem. Any interesting things. So I'm proud of you. So yeah, that's the end of uh, the show. But before that, I make some announcement. Yeah, for the people, so please follow up on Twitter and uh, for the YouTube to see the replay of this talk. Uh, for the online survey, don't forget it. Please, uh, you know, do the online survey. We need your feedback. You know, we can do better surveys and we can find the good speakers and uh, the right topics. So please do the survey online. And uh, we also, uh, this platform is for the young scientists. We have a call for the MIND 2020 Young Scientists Award. So we could call for candidates. So please send your material before June 1st. So that's a very serious deadline. So please submit your material. And uh, if nominated by, you know, senior professors, please ask them to, you know, send materials on time. And uh, next, you know, month, and the early beginning, we have the first week and June is fifth. We have young scientists lectures from mine. So there's four young uh, men. They will deliver very nice talk in different topics. Please stay online with us for the young scientists. And second week in June is a highlight for the rising star from ACS Nano and ICAS talks. So there's three, you know, young scientists, buildings and handsome boy. They are all did very wonderful job. Please, you know, yeah, stick with our ICAS talks. And uh, this was our uh, speakers. Yeah, that's a pretty, pretty large name last week. Someone sent me the surveys on that you will see 
you know, Professor Bao Zhenan. Now Zhenan is here, so she will get online later. So, but stay with us to see many, many new stories will come out and uh, many, many new topics will, you know, get on the stage. And uh, next week, we have more interesting topics, you know, maybe the title is attracted a lot of people, it's artificial intelligence and biomedical applications. My uh, two professors, He Bin was from CMU, Carnegie Mellon University. Everyone knows that that's the best place, the top university for the artificial intelligence. She, uh, he is a superstar, you know, in the uh, brain imaging and these uh, topics. So he will tell us about some brain computer interface. And uh, Gu Zhen uh, from UCLA, he is uh, uh, very young as, uh, you know, Liang Bing, they together with the big titles the last year. So she will talk about something for the drug delivery. All of them are doing so good. And we have two guest hosters here. They are oh yeah, uh, Tony and uh, Xu Sheng. Yeah, both of them will yeah deliver some interesting introductions. So next week we see you for this artificial intelligence. This is the last but not the least, because tomorrow I will give you another talk. This will be in Chinese. So, uh, 明天我会给大家做一场中文的直播, 就是硬核中国心, 谈一下心路历程, 针对目前大家非常关心的, 呃, 芯片的问题, 那会把它谈得比较详细, 从芯片的产生一直到对我们的影响, 一直到芯片在生产一直走到我们生活过程中的经历的这些, 所以, tomorrow, 明天晚上七点到八点半, 请大家锁定 IKX Talks, we talk about Xinlu Li Cheng, uh, Yin Ge Xin, to Xin Lai Tai Shi, Yin Zheng Xiao Gen Nai Jian Mian, so Yi Xi Wa Ming Tian, Ji Xi, and Lo Kan Nan, Rao Su, Ding Zhi Bo, Xin Sao Yi Xiao, and Ar Wei Ma, and Hai, I Shi Jing Zhi Bo, Jian, Huan Yin Ni Jian Ma, Jian, Huan Yin Ni Guan Zhu, Na Ha, Jin Tian Na, Ong Na Tax, Jiu, Da Zhe Li Jian Shu. So today is a, uh, a big day, so we have uh, so many interesting things. I think on this stage, you already see that the wood, the magic wood, the science, so it's uh, so interesting and so beautiful. So uh, tomorrow we met online again, but we will be in Chinese. I will tell you the stories of the chips integrated, uh, you know, chips online. So tomorrow is seven o'clock, it's one hour ahead. So please stay with us. And I see you next week, and I can have the talks, connect world and the universe. So next week, we work for artificial intelligence. So I stay with you online tomorrow. Bye. Have a nice day.